Hi everyone, I'm Haley from the Norma Mayer Library and thanks for joining me today at Storytime. Let's get started with a welcome song that will sing with our voices and with our hands in sign language. So we'll go, hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. Good job everyone. So today our story time is going to be all about now voting is something that we hold elections all throughout the year, but a lot of times big elections are held in November. And elections are when we get to decide the people who represent us in government. So it's really important because it's how we get a say in what happens in our lives and the lives of our communities. So I chose today two nonfiction books about voting. Nonfiction books are books that are about real things, so they help us learn about the world around us. A lot of times in story time, we read fiction books, which are things that authors use their imagination to make up. But it's really important to learn about our world too, and the more we learn, the more we know, right? And the more we know, the easier it'll be when we encounter those concepts on our own when we read about them in a book. So let's get started with our very first book called Equality's Call. A story of voting rights in America, and it's written by Deborah Dyson and illustrated by Magdalena Mora. Equality's Call. Our founders declared when our country began, the consent of the governed was part of the plan. And right here, this board said voting rights. That's what we're going to learn about. Through voting elections, elections and representation, the voice of the people would strengthen our nation. In fact, though, for years, this great founding ideal was extended to some and for others not real. But we heard in the distance, equality's call, a right isn't right till it's granted for all. Right? Notice this page as we go through the book. So we're gonna see more and more people who, are, who stand up and say, it's not right that I don't have the right to vote. The state set the rules about who got to vote and your gender, your race, and your wealth were of no. And so pretty much only white men who owned property could vote and everyone else, all women, and all people of color, and all people who didn't own property couldn't vote. And that's not very fair, right? No. White men with property went to the polls, but the rest of the people were left off the rolls. The dream of democracy wasn't yet true. There were changes to make. There was work still to do. But we heard it grow clearer. Our quality's call. A right isn't right till it's granted for all. The rules about wealth were the first to go. As more were enfranchised, that means they got the right to vote. Their voices could grow, and a small group of voices was raising the fact that enslavement was wrong, an unspeakable act. Good people stood up for the truth that they knew. Abolition and suffrage were long overdue. We heard ever louder equality's call. A right isn't right till it's granted for all. So even though things weren't fair and people were really treated unfairly, there was always people who stood up and said, that's not right. There was war in our nation and slavery ended, amendments were added, the franchise extended. So that means some more people got the right to vote. Now more men could vote, at least so the law said, yet denial through taxes and texts, tests were as widespread and the voices of women were mostly omitted in only some states was their voting permitted. So even though offensively people of color could vote, it wasn't as easy in practice. But nothing could muffle equality's call. A right isn't right till it's granted for all. And these signs say, give us the vote now and votes for women. And what will you do for women's suffrage? Suffragists didn't give up the fight and the 19th Amendment gave women the right but voters of color still met with oppression. Their voting was hindered by brutal suppression, like all those tests and taxes, and even sometimes violence that we read about on the other page. So we passed legislation to try to make voting fair, to extend and protect voters' rights everywhere. So there's different bills, 
like in 1924, the Indian Citizens Act was passed, and in 1964, the Civil Rights Act was passed, and in 1965, the Voting Rights Act was passed, and in 1970, the Voting Rights Act was extended. We heard it, we felt it, equality's call, a right isn't right till it's granted for all. The journey's not over, the work still hasn't ended. Democracy's dream must be constantly tended. Well, where we are now is a debt that we owe to the work of more people than we'll ever know. And each time we vote, we acknowledge that past to honor our rights, to ensure they will last, for to vote is to answer equality's call. And each time we vote, we vote for them all. And about all the people who made it possible for everyone to try and get a right to vote. And that is the end of that first book they were reading, everyone. Good job. And I want to thank Simon and Schulster for giving me permission to read that book. Before we get started in our second book of the day, I thought we could sing a little song about voting. And I thought we could sing it to the tune of Farmer in the Dow. Because even though not everyone can vote, right? Because you can't vote until you're 18, you can still support someone to vote. So we'll go, today's election day, today's election day, we're driving to the polling place, today's election day. We give the person our name, we give the person our name, we sign upon the dotted line, we give the person our name. And then we go into the booth, we go into the booth, it's time to cast our ballot now, we go into the booth. And then what do we do? We choose our candidates. We choose our candidates, and then we push the vote button. We've chosen our candidates, and then. Some of the best parts about voting is that we get a big sticker. We get a big sticker to share with all that we voted. We get a big sticker. And there you go, everyone. That's a little song about everyone going to vote. And I hope everyone gets to support someone who votes and press that button and get that sticker and make your voice heard. So for our second book of the day, we are going to read V is for Voting by Kate Farrell and illustrated by Caitlin Kubalt. V is for voting. A is for active participation. And B is for building a more equal nation. C is for citizens' rights and our duty. And D is for difference, our strength and our beauty. E is for engagement, we all need to care. F is for free press, to find facts and to share. G is to govern, to lead and to guide. H is for homelands that we've occupied. I is for inching ahead bit by bit. The march is a long one, but we cannot quit. J is for judges, they're meant to be fair, to be neutral, unbiased, objective, they swear. N is for knowing that you can take part. L is for local, and that's where you start. M is for matter, and every vote does. N is for never forgetting what was. O is for onward, keep progress in sight. P is for protest when we need to fight. Q is for questions, I've got one or three. R is for represent. They work for me. S is for suffrage, the right to vote. This fight is ongoing, not history's footnote. T is for talented teachers in schools. Well-informed citizens don't suffer fools. U is for unbought, unbossed, undeterred. V is for voting to make your voice heard. W is for working for change, win or lose. X marks the spot on the ballot you choose. Y is for you, we need everyone's hand. Z is for zeal, please bring yours, take a stand. And that is the end of that book, everyone. I want to thank Macmillan Publishing for giving me permission to read these for voting. So before we sing our goodbyes on for the day, I wanted to talk about a really new special resource available from nolalibrary.org. Bookflix is a really cool 
software for beginning readers that helps them, that pairs a nonfiction text, which I love, and a fiction text together so kids can read and make connections. And then I answer some questions about it. This helps us connect what we're reading about to our daily lives and helps build background knowledge. So make sure to check it out. There's some really great books on there. And let's get ready and sing our goodbye song, which we're gonna sing with our hands and with our voices. So we'll go, goodbye friends, goodbye friends, goodbye friends. It's time to say goodbye. And thanks for sharing story time with me, everyone. See you soon.